Digital Audio Health by Cymatrax. Welcome to the Rhonda Grant Show with your host, Rhonda Grant. If you believe that there is more to life than what you see right now and you want to find out more, listen in as her guests share their journey and their extraordinary experiences. Now, here is your host, Rhonda Grant. Welcome to the Rhonda Grant Show. Sometimes the universe has a way of placing people or obstacles in your path to help guide and direct you on your mission. Listen in as we discover the path my guest has traveled. Has she been inspired by a calling, crafted her journey, or a bit of both? I invite you to embrace the conversation and to use it to help you to recognize if this is happening in your life. Our guest today is Jacqueline Tuasi ODJ, and her family and friends call her a queen of problem solving because her birth name, Tuasi, means problem solver and home builder. Jacqueline's company is JA Coaching for Harmony and is a relationship rescue coach helping individuals and couples who argue and constantly fight over their lack of understanding of self and each other create harmony and awaken their bodies, hearts, and minds to return intimacy and peace to their personal and professional relationships. Once they do, they enhance all aspects of their lives and darkness flees before their light. Her big, hairy, audacious goal is to help at least 1,000 individuals and couples awaken their bodies, hearts, and minds by walking them through the initial steps to unlock their hearts, rise in love, and return intimacy and peace to their relationships by 2025. As someone who once walked in her client's shoes, she's committed to being authentic, listening with passion and compassion and delivering value and the expected outcome for all individuals and couples who seek her help. Welcome to the Rhonda Grant Show, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you very much. So would you like to... Let the audience know where you were born and raised. Yes. Uh, first, thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm so delighted to be yes. here on the first month of the year. So yes. you opened the door so hard to me. Yeah, I was born in, in, uh, in Cameroon, um, in the village of uh, uh, called Bankonji. In, uh, in the west part of Cameroon. And I grew up uh, in Cameroon. And uh, uh, in 1991, I moved to the U.S. with my, uh, with my family. And, and I have been here ever since. So I live in the U.S. currently. <laughs> I have uh, five children and three grandchildren. Nice. Uh, Yes, so <laughs> so I, 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 the, the grandchildren are not in the U.S., but uh, all of my children are grown up now, so uh, I only see the grown up at home. <laughs> yes, yes. And so you um, had some rough patches there for a little bit before you ended up uh, actually doing what you're doing. And so do you want to sort of describe to us what that was like for you and when you decided to do something different in order to help your situation? Uh, yeah, when I grew up in Cameroon, I didn't have, uh, I had to drop out of high school because oh. of lack of uh, uh, edu um, support, financial support for my education. Uh, and I, I dropped out of high school and, uh, and I remember one thing that when I dropped out of high school, my, my father said to me, he, uh, he looked at me when I told him that I was dropping out because I was having a lot of difficulty with, uh, with paying the, my, my tuition. And my father has, uh, uh, 13 children and I was one of the 13 and he has to, and he didn't, 
have any income. I say he didn't because he's uh, he's not here anymore. He he passed away. So I made that decision and I told him and he said to me, you have to stay to you have to stay in school. Even if I have to uh, sell my last underwear to pay for your education, I will do it. And I knew that my father didn't have that last underwear to sell. And even the one that he had, if he had to sell it, <laughs> nobody will buy it. <laughs> so I said to my dad, I, I said, I promise you, it's my life. Don't worry. I will, whenever I have the opportunity, I will finish my education. So what happened is that uh, my, my dad, when he was saying, I will sell my underwear, it was just to encourage me to stay because among the, 14, the, the 13 children that he had, uh, he had 14, but one passed away. Among the 13 children, um, he, I was like a guarantee for him because for the parents that live in the rural community and mm -hmm. do not have any steady income, they see the they send the children to school so they can become the their financial uh, well-being when they, they they get old they will become the social security the insurance the, the income everything uh -huh. to support them when they're old yes. so my father saw that uh, uh, in uh, in me and because I was one of the uh, the thirteen who didn't repeat class. So repeating class is a lost investment to parents over there. Oh. You know, yes, that's why when people uh, as I read all this literature and people say, oh, people, uh, parents don't want their girl to go to school. That wasn't my own experience. My father wanted me to stay in school, but because of lack of uh, financial uh, support, I have to drop out because I was going through a lot of difficulty. I came to the point that I was coerced to exchange sexual favor for, for a, a school supply. And at that point that I say no, oh. I won't go to that point to reduce myself to that level because my parents are poor. The best way for me is to drop out. Uh, uh, thankfully, we moved to the United States. Yes. Uh, while raising my, my uh, uh, five children, uh, first, I was raising four children when I went back to school and I got pregnant with the fifth one. I went back, I went back to school here starting in the, in, in college, you know, I started my higher education here, uh, and I finished with my master's degree. So, and it's at that point that I decided that I have to help the other girls that are, uh, behind that I left behind and uh, they're still going through the same struggle that I went through. Uh, I, I say, I'm, I'm going to start a nonprofit that I can provide them support to those girls. And, and I started the, the nonprofit while I was still doing my, um, my master's degree. Mm -hmm. uh, I started the nonprofit and my, the, the, the initial goal of the nonprofit is to build the school because I say if I, I have to move from the from the village to the city to to study, and I was far away from my parents and all the difficulty that I encountered just being because I, my, I have to move at age eight because there weren't any uh, any school that could support me. And my father saw that I was uh, so smart and so intelligent. Mm -hmm. He said the best way is to send me where I will have that opportunity to advance my education. And the, all the difficulty that I that encountered along the way, um, I say if I have stayed with my parents, maybe uh, that could be, uh, imagine an eight years old child, you have to move away from your parents. And not yeah. knowing what is what to expect at the other end of the road, right. <laughs> so that's why I say if we start uh, uh, because uh, at this point there is already a uh, debut school, there is middle school in the village, mm -hmm. but no high school. But the girls are were moving to the city to continue the education, and none of them was uh, was finishing the education. So I set myself up to to start building a school. <laughs> that was in 2005. And right. uh, we we started the, the 
we lay down the foundation of the school. We build one building already, and we continue because we couldn't find money to support the education, the the construction of the school. So we found a way to uh, to go around that. And and in 2016, we started a non pro, um, a tutoring program and the scholarship program so the girls that are in the middle school can advance their education because uh, in Cameroon, you, there are fees for education. Mm -hmm. So you don't just go and, <laughs> and sit in, like here in the U.S., uh, mm -hmm. education is free here. But in Cameroon, you have to pay for everything. So we started the, the, the tutoring program First, to help the girls pass the high school entrance exam in Cameroon, you have to pass the high school entrance exam to advance to high school. We started to help them. And uh, and then we saw when they, they succeeded because parents in the village, they didn't have any expectation that the mm -hmm. girls would even move forward. When I came in to do the feasibility study and I said to the parents, we're going to uh, help your girls move forward. And they laugh at me. <laughs> they were so skeptic. They oh. say, yeah, those girls, we get to spend money on them and they end up coming home and sit in the kitchen with their mother. And I say, I'm going to change that. I will, I, I will change that trend. I'll, I'll ask them, do you trust me? They say, we see, we're going to see. So the first year when we went from uh, uh, a 25% success rate to a 45%, the, the village was uh, so it, it was like a holiday in the village. They were so surprised. Wow. Wow. So and they, they started to trust me. Um, but they came to me and they say, "Now that you solve one problem, you created the other one. We don't oh, have what was the other problem. To have the money to support them in oh. high school. We don't okay. have money to move them to high school. Oh." So I came back here and I talked to my board and, and we decided to support, to create a scholarship program to support the girls. And, uh, and to date, we have graduated uh, uh, 20, uh, 30, 30 girls already and, and uh, 10 of them already finished high school. So that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. What a blessing you have been to those women. A great blessing, really. Great blessing for those who are helping me because it's uh, <laughs> I can't do this alone. Uh, and I have help along no, the way. No, we can't, we can't do it alone, but we need that leader. And you were the leader. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Thank you for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's the person. I mean, there's uh, their workers and then there's the leaders, right? Exactly. And, mm hmm Exactly. And uh, so where are you with the school right now? Are you uh, each year you're bringing more and more children into the school? More and more. Uh, the, our school is not yet built. We okay. only, we only, yeah, we haven't finished. We haven't completed the, the, the building, uh, mm -hmm. the, the construction of the school. Right. We only have one building there. Um so we, we we can't open the door yet because we could turn that one building into a classroom and that's what we did. But now it's the financial uh, struggle that we're facing that we can't go any further because for the, the organization we turned uh, 18 this year and we, ha we, haven't, we don't have funding. We're running the organization on shoestream and uh, yes, so that's what that's why my business of coaching that I'm doing now add every profit goes to the to support the to, to support this program. Mm -hmm. Yes, every profit goes to support this program, mm -hmm. and with other individual donors that are supporting us along the way. Right. Yes. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So you're coaching. Um, tell the audience about your coaching and how you ended up starting your coaching business. Yes. Thank you for, for, for that. Um, 
the coaching, I got the inspiration from this uh, nonprofit because when I started the, the nonprofit, I thought I was just helping the girls. And, and, and I was helping, I was helping the girls. Mm -hmm. But I felt like a fraud because while I was doing this work, mm -hmm. my, my relationship was falling apart. And initially, I thought by doing the work and uh, being among other people, other professional, mm -hmm. I will uh, curtail my relationship issue. Uh, that will help me forget about my relationship issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this, you're taught, you're speaking about your relationship with your husband. My husband, yes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yes, I was having a. Uh, uh, my relationship with my husband was falling apart. Uh huh. Um, and and I did everything that I could uh, because I I didn't want to I, I didn't want to continue with the the with the trend with all the the struggle I didn't I wanted the, the struggle like every relationship we have we've encountered a uh, difficulty mm -hmm. but man I didn't know how to resolve it we went to right. we went we consulted a different professional mm -hmm. but. Nothing was working. Nothing, uh, to the point that I was I was uh, exhausted, and that's mm -hmm. the only way out for me. I thought was divorce, right. and I went so far as to call a divorce lawyer mm -hmm. to uh, to ask if I can get some help through <laughs> through, through through that uh, route. Mm -hmm. uh, and the divorce lawyer said to me, "You have to." You have to put down a uh, five thousand retainer before I can start talking about your case. Oh. And that said, hearing those words were like a they they hit me like a ton of bricks. Be not because I couldn't pay the five thousand, I could I could pay the five thousand. I was ready to do everything to resolve mm -hmm. the issue, mm -hmm. but. I have to take a step back. It was a catalyst for me to right. take a step back and say, no, there must be a, a better solution than divorce. Mm -hmm. So, and I thought, so I have to pay $5,000 to destroy what we have built for 27 years. At the time I was uh -huh. married for 27 years. Mm -hmm. and, and I look at my children and I say, isn't that selfish to take that action for yourself and then, uh, destroy everything that you built. What about your children? Uh, it's at that point that I say, no, I, I'm determined to look for a real solution. And I don't know if there is any, but I know that somewhere out there, there must be somebody who can help me. Okay. And coincidentally at work, uh, I have difficulty, uh, business difficulty. I'm a uh, colleague refer, um, a coach she suggested to to see a coach i didn't know that there was there were coaches for a relationship issue mm -hmm. i thought coaching were a coach coaches were only in the football field yes <laughs> yes that's that's what i knew that's what i knew at the time exactly yeah yeah <laughs> So I took a bite and I went to see that coach. I didn't have any expectation. No, how could you? Yeah. And, and because I didn't know what I, what to expect. And, and, and also, I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So I went by curiosity, but my curiosity turned into something that uh, it, it was like the, 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 the gate of a uh, 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 resolution to all the problem that I, it, it was like the door opened for me uh -huh. to enter the the gate of um of uh, success wonderful yes the gate of success because she scheduled me for for 10 session and five session my uh, business issue were, were resolved uh -huh. and uh, it's at that point that I say every question that she was asking me, the way that she was conducting the, the coaching made me think, oh, this is what you already doing, but you don't have the name on, on that. So oh. all, everything that you have been doing with your staff in Cameroon is called coaching because I'm based in the United States, but I'm the one managing the project in Cameroon with the staff that are there. 
and we get, I, I get to meet with them and I coach them. But I didn't know that it's called coaching. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You were doing it naturally. Naturally, naturally. Right. And, and the, the program in Cameroon is very successful. Mm-hmm. I'm not there, but it's very successful despite the financial struggle that we go through. Everything that we're doing is working. So it's at that point that I say, let me see what I can do. I will go and train at least to understand the coaching techniques, at least right. to understand, at least to even have the certificate. Because if you say to people that you have certificate, they believe you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went to train to become a coach. It's during this coaching training that the, I was experimenting with the uh, with the techniques of coaching mm-hmm. in my own relationship. I started mm-hmm. experimenting with with those techniques in my own relationship, applying to my relationship, and it started working. And I started finding solution, and and I started breathing. And by the time that I finished my training in in a year and a, 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 almost three months, I was my relationship was out of the door, the, the bickery, the uh, argument. I was laying in bed with my husband and fair miles apart. All of that were gone. Uh-huh. In no time, they were gone. We were back to hugging, something that we didn't do for years. Yes. <laughs> we yeah. were back to hugging, to talking without yelling, yes. uh, to sit down uh, and have a just chat with my husband. And I said, wow, so this is, this is what I was missing. And I said to myself, so now, how come nobody told me that coaching could help me solve this problem, my relationship issue? How come there is nobody out there talking about this? Mm-hmm. That's how I became a coach. And I started coaching uh, other people because I discovered during my uh, experiment uh, experimentation uh, uh, a, 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 pro, a session that mm-hmm. the problem the problem that I had w- with my husband was that we didn't understand each other. That's that was it because we have a different way of communicating. Yes. So I set myself up to uh, to study that more mm-hmm. and uh, digging more, digging more, mm-hmm. and and I came up with um, with six. Ingredients. So I, <laughs> I okay. manufacture my own recipe and right. came up with six ingredients that I use with my client now to help my client. Just not just patching, patching the problem, but eradicate the problem. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's uh, that's how I, I became a coach. <laughs> right. Are you able to share the six agree- ingredients, or they would be, it be too lengthy? Uh, and, and now I can share is uh, the first ingredient that I came. Uh, the first ingredient is uh, um, commit, uh, um, not commit. Your first date, yeah. The first date, because what I found during my uh, my own uh, personal, I, I applied that on my relationship first while I was applying that. I discovered that uh, the first date is crucial in every, every relationship. There is one thing that I discovered that my, my husband said to me mm-hmm. when we first met, when we first met, he said this to me. I, I heard him, but I didn't give any attention because I didn't, I didn't listen. Right. Because Hearing and listening is that two different thing. You can That's hear right. because your ears are open to hear. Right. right. <laughs> but to listen, you have to put a little bit of effort in it. Right. I, I discovered that I, I heard him, but I didn't listen. And during uh, our marriage, I kept violating that one thing that he said to me that was so important to him. And that's what that was the source of our difficulty in our marriage. So I said to my client, go back to that first date and examine. I know that I have a client who say, I have been married for 30 years. Can I remember 
that thing that he said to me that was so important. I said, because that thing doesn't leave you. Mm -hmm. You always remember that. You must you you can say ten thousand things in 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 that uh, during that date, but there is one important thing that your partner you said to your partner and your partner said to you. But if you the one who approached me, I will say go back and see what your partner said to you, mm -hmm. because that's one thing that was so important to them, and they say it to you because what I discovered is that uh, on the first date. Nobody lie. It doesn't matter. You can be a, a, a expert liar in your life. Mm -hmm. The first date, you will lie better. You will be the best liar <laughs> that you are. If you are somebody who is trustworthy or uh, who tells the truth all the time, you will tell the truth, your truth on that day. Mm -hmm. So nobody lie on, on the first date. They will tell you who they are. They will share with you what they know of themselves. They will share. And we hear that and we we in deny. That's mm -hmm. the problem. We hear, but we in deny. We say, oh, so what? In my case, that's what I did. I say, oh, he, he said this, but so what? Are we? Mm -hmm. I, um, and do you find that uh, women might say, so what? I can change him. That's the problem. <laughs> There's a problem. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the bigger problem. Yes. Because we say, oh, when I marry him, you know, we, uh, when I get him, because the, the first date is the courtship, right? You, wanna, mm -hmm. you want to prove to them that, uh, yeah, you don't want to argue anything. Nobody yeah. wants to argue on the first date. Nobody. Mm -hmm. So, but you say, oh, over time, he will get over it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over time, he he will get over it. Or over time, she will get over it. She will forget it. Yes, but nobody forget about that. No, no. Because in the truth, they open your their heart. To open your heart to somebody, you have to trust that person. You know. So and that's what you do on the first date. You come with your trust in that person because you you. Even although you don't know that person, for that person to accept to come to the date with you, it's already a, it's already a sign of a, a, a respect to you. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so the, I start with that. And the second uh, ingredient is commit to authenticity. How honest are you? Because to really be uh, overcome that uh, difficulty that you created with violating that uh, that uh, uh, important point that your your partner said to you, you have to commit to authenticity. How honest are you? How honest will you be able to go back to the to uh, to your partner and say to the partner that, oh, you said this to me this day, and mm -hmm. this is what I made of it. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to do that. So we work to uh, to that. Uh, um, to I work with my client mm -hmm. on on that point. Commit to authenticity. Right. And what's and the then, third one? Mm -hmm. uh, the third one is uh, is uh, writing a letter of forgiveness. Uh, who yes. are you forgiving? Uh, you have to write the letter of forgiveness, starting with yourself, uh, forgiving yourself first. Right. And then you can forgive anyone else. You can pick anyone that you it's a process. It's a process that right. I, I go I'll help my client go through and they have to write a letter of forgiveness. That that they can it can be their partner, it can be whoever they want to, to pick to mm -hmm. forgive, to write a letter to. And the letter is not necessary to give to somebody. The letter is the process that you go through. Because I have the program, uh, uh, my uh, uh, relationship rescue uh, uh, course that uh, I'm going to launch soon. Um, I have been working in, in private with my client, but I'm going to launch that for everybody to, to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, uh, 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 when you do go through that process with me, it's for you. It's for your well-being because writing this letter of forgiveness, you awaken your body 
your heart and your mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By writing that letter of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Because people tend to say, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry is like, uh, it's not, <laughs> it's completely different from forgive me. Forgive oh, me. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And writing the letter is not, it's not, you can add for my, personally, in my case, I wrote the letter to my husband. Um, and I gave him the letter. It has been five years. We have never discussed it. We didn't discuss it. So I don't know if he read it. I don't know. I'm sure that he read it. You know, I'm sure but, that he read it because your yes. relationship improved, right? Uh, that letter was the, the, the gate of heaven. Yes. The gate of heaven. Right. The, the gate of heaven. Writing the letter, it, it walks you through. You, you have to examine your entire life by writing the letter. Mm-hmm. I have a client who said to me, who went on rampage of forgiveness. She, she came back and she said to me, I have asked forgiveness to everybody, even at work. I was hurting my, uh, my colleague and I didn't mm-hmm. know it's through your program that I I noticed that I was hurting my my uh, my colleague at work. I went and I asked for forgiveness to everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you elevate uh, a person's consciousness when you say you need to write a letter to yourself of forgiveness, and then to your husband or your spouse or whoever it is, or whoever. Yes. Yeah, and then. It makes a person feel so good that they just keep it going. I mean, what a what a blessing you are. What is the fifth one? Uh, and, and the fifth one is uh, uh, this was the third one. Uh, the 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 fourth one is trusting your God. Oh, yes, okay. trusting your God. You see, we have so my program is to walk you through yourself. Is to get you to really. Think of who you are, uh-huh. not just running to people to ask for a solution. We all have those solutions in ourselves. In we ourselves. have the solution. Yes. But yes. what I'm doing here is to, really to awaken you, the person that you are so you can live your life to the fullest. Uh-huh. So by trusting your God, we examine that trusting your God. How, what is your relationship with your God? Because that little voice inside you that tells you, don't do this or do that. How, how do you trust that? How, what, is your, what type of uh, 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 relationship do you have with your God, with your instinct? You know? So that's, I get to walk my client through that and show them what to do to really master and recognize that that little voice at the moment that they need to. So mm-hmm. I get to walk them through that. And the fifth one is yes. um, separating yourself. Separating it, yourself? Yes, separating yourself. Mm-hmm. It means that at some point in the relationship, you feel so tired because you keep giving, 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 that you're so exhausted. And you start complaining. So when you start complaining in the relationship, it's time for you to put your foot on your bra- on the brake. Oh, and yes, it's time for you to put your foot on the brake. You know that when grown up, grown up, you usually we don't um, we don't usually ask people to. Uh, we're gonna go to therapy or whatever, but we don't ask turn to our relative or somebody near to us and say, help us. Um, Because that's why we complain. And complain for for grown-up is a cry for help. So if you hear somebody starting complaining next to you, it's time for them to put their foot on the brake and take care of themselves. Okay. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So I work my client through that that process uh, so they can understand themselves 
and know mm-hmm. when to stop. And the and uh, the last one uh-huh. that is like a fun one because you already did all the work, and this time is just the fun one to conclude. Uh-huh. Is relationship season. Many many of my, of my clients say, oh, "Relationship season? What are you talking about?" Yes. <laughs> A relationship have their own four season, like the spring, the the summer, the the fall, and the winter. Yes, yes, that's and, right. Yes, and every person has to go through that process and get to identify what the season are because my my relationship season and the people said the happiness season or the courtship season, whatever you have to. I have. A process that I work my client through, and they get to mark their own season. Uh, somebody will say my happiness season is uh, during the usually even the the literature will tell you is summer. It's yeah. not true for everybody. No. For me, for example, the season that I get to uh, 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 have a better uh, uh, happy relationship with my husband is during the winter. Mm-hmm. During the winter, we do a lot of stuff together. Uh, I don't know why, but we get closer, <laughs> closer mm-hmm. during the mm-hmm. winter more than the summer. You know, so it's it, def- it, it, it depends on how you define your happiness. So right. that's that's individual. It's not one uh, one uh, uh, size fit all. No, no, of course not. No. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's what uh those are the stuff. Well, that I- was wonderful. And they're fun and there's it's so enlightening to hear those six steps. You're listening to the Rhonda Grant show right now, whose podcast has been treated with digital audio health by my sponsor, Symatrex. And today we are speaking with Jacqueline. Do you see Ode? Jacqueline Choisi Odige. There we go. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. (laughs) What extraordinary discoveries have you found in your life? Well, I guess one. What extraordinary discovery have you found in your life? Uh, The one thing that I've discovered in my life is that um, I'm a people person. I'm a people person. Uh, Yeah, I shine. When I'm dealing with people, yeah. When I'm helping people uh, resolve uh, uh, the the problem, and, and it's not an accident because my name Shwasi in my vernacular, my my parent name is Shwasi. Yeah. It was it wasn't by mistake. Uh, Shwasi means problem solver. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah. problem solver. Because my my um. My parent credit the survivor to to me. Uh, they were I was born in war, mm-hmm. and the, the independence war in Cameroon, and and, uh, and my parents were hiding in the forest, and they credit the survivor to me because they said that during the they they have to to move from in the in the forest they have to move constantly, and so they didn't have a, a, a food to eat. But every time that they move and they relocate it to one location, to one place, they will find this animal called a pangolin. Mm-hmm. And that was, fe- that, that, was, that was what helped them survive in the forest. And they were pregnant with me when, while they were running. So, <laughs> so mm-hmm. the name Ishwasi has a result. And ever since I have been solving problems. So, and, and Wonderful. I, yes, and I discovered that I excel in my life. I feel happy, and when I'm I'm helping people. So when everything that I'm doing here, whether it's in a nonprofit, whether I'm talking to somebody or coaching to me, I, I can be sick, but when I get in front of my client to coach them. Oh, I forget about everything that is around me. <laughs> yes, good for you. Do you feel that you've been called then to your journey? It's my calling. It's my it calling is. to serve. Yeah. My calling is to serve. Yes. And my goal is to be able to um, uh, uh, to help at least 
a hundred a hundred uh, uh, one thousand individual or couple uh, resolve or uh, create harmony in the in the life and return intimacy to the intimacy and peace to the relationship whether prof- personal or professional by mm-hmm. 2025. Nice. That's what my a be- goal. What a wonderful goal. How many people reach you? How many they contact you? Uh, my my website is jalifecoaching.com. Uh, people can contact me there. There, there is my, uh, uh, my f- f- um, phone number there um, okay. or my email address, or they can they can subscribe because there is a uh, subscribe to my uh, newsletter or they can check me out on LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, uh, Jacqueline Odige on Facebook mm-hmm. or LinkedIn or Instagram, Jacqueline Odige. So you check me out on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, you will find me there. Yes, uh, and we will post your website uh, in yes. the show notes, okay, so that people uh, may have that right there. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I would like to talk to people because when I, the, before I even start any program, I have to meet the client so we can uh, uh, chat a little so I can understand oh, yes. if I'm the right person for them, if mm-hmm. my program is right for them because I don't want people to come in and be disappointed. So I, I don't just take the client. I have to go through that uh, 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 interview, like not interview, but uh, <laughs> the, the call, initial, have- yeah, the initial um, chat with them. And don't you find it wonderful that uh, Zoom has become something that we end up using every day? Uh, because the pandemic has uh, has forced us into uh, meeting with people and discussing things with people, but it's really opened up everything that we do on a global market, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, Zoom is a blessing to uh, to my business because I'm meeting people. Uh, I'm I have a client all over. I have client in 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 Europe. I have client in Canada. I have client <laughs> in the US. Yeah. I have client in Africa. So it's uh, almost everywhere now. Everybody can reach me, and and this is uh, this has been a blessing for me. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. This has well, been a blessing. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for spending your time with us and letting our audience know about what you do. And your genuineness is just beautiful. I've so I so enjoyed our chat previous to the show, and I've really enjoyed our interview. So thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Thank you so much for having me and and letting me share my uh, my message with uh, other people. And uh, and I'm waiting for them to show up and uh, put your relationship on the best place that you, you can with me. I'm available mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> oh, yes. They'll be in good hands for sure. I've <laughs> learned you. a lot in, in our time together. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. <laughs> this is wonderful. Theme song for the Rhonda Grant show is Sun on the Water, composed and performed by my friend John Park Wheeler. This is Rhonda Grant with the Rhonda Grant show, author of Magical Forces Within, Extraordinary Discoveries in an Ordinary Life, inviting you to look for the magical forces within yourself today and every day. Thanks for tuning in to the Rhonda Grant show with your host, Rhonda Grant. If you would like to find out more information about Rhonda and her upcoming guests and the work that she does, go to her website, rondagrantauthor.com. That's rondagrantauthor.com. Digital Audio Health by Cymatrax.